something that'll change the world and human life as we know it. Sorry, I have three other interviews to do before this party's over. Yep, yeah, they're not working on something that'll change the world as we know it. They say they are. Yeah, but they're lying. I'm not. Teleportation? It's a joke. What? He's conning you. I was there. I saw it. I think the world should know about it now. Why not get more? Let me become your major project. I'm talking about a book, not a magazine article. Follow me and my work day by day in as much detail as you can stand. I don't have a life, so there's nothing for you to interfere with. Research the background. Cover the process. I want you to go through. I'm going to teleport as soon as possible, right now. I feel incredible. Ronnie, I hardly need to sleep anymore, and I feel wonderful. It's like a drug, but a perfectly pure and benign drug. The power I feel surging inside me. Ah! Come on, right now. No, oh, hey, wait. Don't give me that born again teleportation rap. I told you I'm scared to do it. What do I have to say? I'm not going to do it. You're a fucking drag, you know that? Something went wrong, Seth. When you went through, something went wrong. You're changing, Seth. Everything about you is changing. You look bad. You smell bad. What's happening to me? Am I dying? Veronica, you don't know how right you were. I've gotten much, much worse. A fly got into that. Transmitter pod with me that first time when I was alone. <laughs> Help me. The fly hit the big screen the month of August in 1986, produced on a relatively small budget of $9 million and was very successful on release making 14 million in the USA and a further 20 million worldwide. For an R-rated horror movie, the box office results were very impressive. The Flyers made many top 10 lists of best horror films and is highly regarded by the public and critics alike. The movie, I believe, has remained director David Cronenberg's most successful film to date. David is commonly known for using large amounts of body horror in his movies. His style of filmmaking explores people's fears of bodily transformation and infection. In the first half of his career, he explores these themes mostly through horror and science fiction, although his work has since expanded beyond these genres, to such films as History of Violence and Eastern Promises. The film was loosely based on the short story The Fly, published in a 1957 issue of Playboy magazine, which also formed the basis for the 1958 film The Fly, starring David Hedison. The original 1958 film was very popular on release and was also distributed by 20th Century Fox. The remake borrows a few ideas from the 58 version, but does push the horror aspect far more. In the original film, instead of fusing with the fly, he said an arm are swapped with that of a fly in the teleportation device. It's quite funny seeing the actor with a fly's head slapped on his shoulders, but I can imagine it would have been effective in the 50s, and the ending with his original head which is attached to a fly's body sees him trapped in a web and about to be eaten by a spider. The Simpsons cleverly satirised it in one of their Halloween specials. David Cronenberg had been approached first to direct the film, but was unavailable due to his ties with Dino De Laurentiis, who was attempting to bring Total Recall to the big screen. Once the production was cancelled, David was approached again and took the job, but wanted to change the original script. The revised script by David differed greatly from Charles Edwards Pogue's original screenplay, though it still retained the basic plot and the central concept of a gradual mutation. Cronenberg rewrote the characters and most of the dialogue from scratch and carried over a few key moments and concepts. Certain aspects of the transformation from Pogue's draft, such as the hero's loss of body parts, were expanded upon and Cronenberg also layered in his trademark themes of sexuality, body horror and personal identity. He also made it a point to keep Brundle as articulate for as long as possible. Despite the extensive rewrites of Pogue's script, 
Cronenberg insisted the writer's guild that he and Poe share screenplay credit, since he felt that his version could not have come to pass without Pogue's script to serve as a foundation. Seth Brundle, a brilliant but eccentric scientist, meets Veronica, a journalist for Particle magazine, at a Meet the Press event held by Bartok Science Industries, the company that provides funding for Brundle's work. Seth takes Veronica back to the warehouse that serves him as both home and laboratory, and shows her a project that will change the world, a set of telepods that allows instantaneous teleportation of an object from one pod to another. Brundle convinces Veronica to keep the project's existence quiet in exchange for exclusive rights to the story, and she begins to document his work. Although the telepods can transport inanimate objects, they do not work properly on living things, as is demonstrated when a live baboon is turned inside out during an experiment. Seth and Veronica soon begin a romantic relationship, and their first sexual encounter provides inspiration for Seth, who reprograms the telepod computer to cope with living creatures. Shortly thereafter, he successfully teleports a second baboon with no apparent harm. Flush with this success, Brundle wants to spend a romantic evening with Veronica, but she suddenly departs before they can celebrate. Brundle's judgement soon becomes impaired by alcohol, and his paranoid fear that Veronica is secretly rekindling her relationship with her editor and former lover, Stathis Borens. In reality, Veronica has left to confront Borens about a vile threat spurred by his romantic jealousy of Brundle to publish the teleport story without her consent. Upset, Brundle hastily decides to teleport himself in Veronica's absence, unaware that a common housefly has slipped inside the transmitter pod with him. Brundle emerges from the receiving pod, seemingly normal. Seth and Veronica reconcile, and shortly after his teleportation, Seth begins to exhibit what at first appear to be beneficial effects of the process, such as increased strength, stamina and sexual potency. He believes this to be a result of the teleportation process, purifying his body. Veronica, however, is more concerned about Brundle's growing mania, as well as the strange bristly hairs growing out of his previously sustained wound in his back. Brundle quickly becomes arrogant and violent, insisting that the teleportation process is like a beneficial drug, and tries to force Veronica to undergo teleportation. When she refuses, he abandons her to indulge in a barroom arm wrestling match that leaves his opponent with a compound fracture and casual sex with a woman whom he picks up at the bar. Veronica's next morning arrival at the lab spares the woman from being forcibly teleported by Brundle. After he angrily throws Veronica out and dismisses her concerns about his health, Brundle realises that something went horribly wrong during his teleportation, when his fingernails begin falling off. He checks his computer records and discovers that the telepod computer, confused by the presence of two separate life forms, in the sending pod, merged him with the fly at the molecular genetic level. The Academy Award winning makeup was designed and executed by Chris Wayless. Chris had previously worked on Raiders of the Lost Ark, Gremlins and Return of the Jedi, and later went on to direct The Fly 2 and provided his talents on Naked Lunch. The final Brundle fly creature was designed first, and then the various steps needed to carry protagonist Seth Brundle to the final incarnation were designed afterwards. The transformation was intended to be a metaphor for the aging process. To that end, Brundle loses hair, teeth and fingernails, with his skin becoming more and more discoloured and lumpy. The intention of the filmmakers was to give Brundle a bruised and cancerous look that gets progressively worse, with the final Brundlefly hybrid creature literally bursting out of Brundle's hideously deteriorated human skin. The transformation was broken up into seven distinctive stages. One stage wasn't in the film though, but was cut and can be seen in the deleted scenes on the DVD and Blu-ray and also the theatrical trailer, during the scene where he fuses the baboon and cat together. The makeup for him during the stage before he becomes a fly did make me chuckle a bit, because he does kinda look like a walking turd. It's an interesting idea the skin is used as a cocoon for the fly, as it makes its final appearance at the end, which is truly spectacular and horrific at the same time. There's no computer effects, it's all done with puppets shot within camera. The fly does have very limited movement, but they shoot it in a way to hide that fault. The makeup effects team clearly deserved the Oscar they were given. The score to the fly was composed by Howard Shaw, who provides an outstanding soundtrack, a full on operatic classic score that strikes a perfect tone for the movie. Many horror films during the 80s went with an electronic score, which was a popular choice at the time, and I'm a huge fan of synth music, but a full on orchestra really gives the film the edge, especially on an emotional level. One of my favourite scenes where the music really left me on the edge of my seat was when he arm wrestles the guy in the bar. 
The build up is really intense because you have a good idea what's going to happen and then you see his arm get broken in half. The score is easily available and is definitely worth a purchase. The Fly is an outstanding horror film which has a strong emotional core to it unlike many horror films you come across on a regular basis. The relationship between Brundle and Veronica works so well, after viewing the film I felt a bit depressed. The film ends on a sad note and during three quarters of the way through the film she finds she is pregnant and doesn't know what to do and visits Brundle but she can't bring up the courage to tell him. It's heartbreaking stuff and he tells her to leave and never come back. I think this element really struck a chord with its audience and critics but also the incredible makeup effects really helps the movie heighten the emotions because you feel so bad for Brundle especially when he is struggling to walk. The moments where he discusses his new digestive process is very interesting and he comments on how he can't swallow solid things anymore but this new digestive process does lend to some really gross out scenes when he attacks Stathis. David Cronenberg was surprised when the fly was seen by some critics as a cultural metaphor for AIDS since he originally intended the film to be a more general comment for disease itself, terminal conditions like cancer and more specifically the aging process. David was quoted as saying, if you or your lover has AIDS, you watch that film and of course you'll see AIDS in it, but you don't have to have that experience to respond emotionally to the movie. And I think that's really its power. This is not to say that AIDS didn't have an incredible impact on everyone, and of course after a certain point people were seeing AIDS stories everywhere, so I don't take any offence that people see that in my movie. For me though there was something about the fly story that was much more universal to me, aging and death, something all of us have to deal with. There were a couple of scenes deleted from the film, one scene that upset test audiences was when Brundle does a test on a second baboon with a cat to test a fusion experiment which goes wrong and it fuses the animals together and it attacks Brundle. It is pretty gross and I'm not surprised it got cut, anything involving animals being tortured or mutilated never really impresses audiences and upsets most people. I'm never a fan of cats or dogs or animals in general being hurt on film even though it's not real what you're seeing but the idea of seeing it is never my cup of tea. The original movie had a number of different endings mostly aimed towards something upbeat with Veronica dreaming that she is pregnant with Brundle's baby and then she suddenly wakes up and it's just a dream but then she falls back to sleep and dreams of a human baby with wings that hatches from a cocoon and flies off towards a distant light. There are variations of this ending but they didn't fare well with test audiences and after they were so shocked by the death of Brundle and with the strong connection between Brundle and Veronica and it didn't feel right with Veronica ending up with Stathis so they left it out with the dramatic sad ending intact. There has been discussions of a remake and a sort of companion piece to the original David Cronenberg film for the last number of years. Obviously there was a official sequel in 1989 that was successful but was panned by critics and lacked the strong emotional script of the first movie and focused more on gore and gross out scenes. Cronenberg caught wind of Fox wanting to pursue a new film but they failed to ask him. He had come up with an idea for a new movie and did approach them but I believe the executives felt it would be too expensive to make and the story was too extreme for the general public. If you are a fan of the horror genre I'm sure you've already seen The Fly and hopefully love it as much as I do. The performances from Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis could easily have been nominated for an Academy Award, especially Jeff. His transformation is really effective and the amount of pressure having to act under the makeup is a great triumph. I think it's easily his best performance of his career. The character of Stathis is a little uneven and is the only issue I have with the movie. He comes across as a jealous selfish guy, then it seems he becomes very supportive and tries to save Veronica near the end, acting like a hero. His character swings back and forth but he makes the right decision at the end. Some of you may not be fans of body horror and the imagery is very strong near the end of the movie and it does stick in your mind afterwards. As a kid when I saw it it freaked me out and it's definitely a movie that should not be watched by a younger audience. But there's no denying the makeup effects truly are spectacular and gives a weight to the horror and as I said earlier the emotional structure of the story as well. It's a true classic horror film that needs to be in everyone's collection. I'm pregnant with Seth's baby. What do you want? I came to tell you. Um, I... I just, I 
wanted to see you before. You have to leave now. And never come back here. I couldn't tell. Let's go, Dan. No! Uh, no, I think we should wait for a few days. I don't think you're in the right state no, of mind. No, now. I want it out of my body now. Oh, God.